What's happening, folks? Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. Coming up tonight, we're going to look at that one area of the squad that still needs improving this summer. We've had a brilliant transfer window so far. There's no doubt about that. We've brought in Barkas, we've brought in Ayeti, we've brought in David Turnbull and Shane Duffy. We also extended Mohamed El Yunus's loan deal at the beginning of the season as well. Um, that's the best part of £15 million the club have spent so far this season. Um, unlike many other summers, we can't really grumble so far about the business. OK, you might have a gripe about getting th some things done earlier um, because we're out of the Champions League. But this is one of the best windows I can remember. So what we're going to do tonight is look at the three left-back targets that we're currently being linked with. Um, and I'm going to give you a percentage chance of whether I think that deal is going to happen or no. That's going to be based on absolutely nothing other than my personal opinion. I'm not in the know or anything, so don't go on my back. Before we get started tonight, this video is sponsored by the One Football app. I've been really, really impressed with it since I started using it. Unless you choose Celtic as your favourite team, you've got all your Celtic-related news, transfer rumours, um, which is really busy at this time of year, obviously. There's a section for done deals as well, so you can keep track of all the deals that Celtic have done so far this summer. You can get push notifications when the lineups are announced. There's goal alerts as well. If for whatever reason you end up missing a game or you want to keep tabs on another game, you can set goal alerts for it. There's also a brilliant section for stats. You can keep tabs on the league table. You can check top scorers, who's got the most assists, and you can watch selected UEFA Champions League and UEFA Europa League qualifiers for free on the app. The app is free to download from wherever you get your apps on your phone. Click the link in the description to download the app. Let me know what you think of it. The first target we're going to start with is the one that everybody has been talking about. It's Alfie Doughty, 20-year-old left-back from Charlton. We've apparently had two bids rejected already. Been linked to him for a couple of weeks now. I think you can tell if we've had two bids rejected already that there is interest there from the club and we do want to bring him here to Celtic. I think he looks a good player. I think technically he looks very good. Um, I think he's got goals in him. He scored uh, in Charlton's opening game of the season last weekend. He's got assists there as well. Um, looks really, really quick, which is good for a fullback. I think if we're going to play in a 3-5-2, um, obviously we've only got Greg Taylor, who is an out-and-out left-back now, um, now that Bolly's left. By the way, before I go any further, I can't believe Ball and Golly's ended up at Istanbul Basik year. The Turkish champions playing the Champions League group stages. Um, glad we'll finally get rid of him, but I can't believe he's going to be playing Champions League group stage football in we Um I'm a bit better about that. But anyway, forget that. Um, we've only got Greg Taylor there. We set up the 3-5-2 on Saturday. That's the formation we would all like to see going forward. So we can do that with one left back. Um, and I don't know what it tells you about Greg Taylor's place in the team if Forrest was played at left wing back ahead of him at the weekend. So if Doughty is a more progressive attacking-minded player, I think that left wing back role might suit him. This week, I spoke to Charlton fan Tyler Rowlinson about Dotty, about his potential, and about whether he thinks he'll leave Charlton this summer. Here's what Tyler had to say. I would describe Doughty as a very versatile player. He, he has been utilised in the left-back position previously with Charlton. However, I think that his actual position is out on the wing and in the midfield area. But when he was playing at left-back, he was darting forward. He was a very, very attacking player. Loved to take on players with the amount of pace that he has. He's an absolutely rapid player. Loves to swing balls into the box and does have an eye for goal. He's grabbed a couple of goals for Charlton previously last season. He bagged the first goal of this season against Crew. I think under the right management, he can play at the highest level possible. I think that he has a bright future ahead of him. I think he's a very, very good player for his age. I think he's only 20 years old. So he's got a big, he's got a long old career ahead of him. And I think that he really could under the right management and if he's played to his strengths and he's played in the right position, used in the right way, I think he does have a bright future ahead and I think that he really is capable of playing at the highest level. There is a part of me that does think he may be out of the door this summer. I think it's going to take... It's going to take a bit to keep hold of him. He does have only 12 months left on his contract. I'm led to believe that Celtic have had a £1 million bid rejected by Charlton. Us as Charlton fans knew that that was going to be the case. I think many Charlton fans are expecting Doughty to be going for at least three to four, maybe even five million. I think it's going to take a lot more um, for him to leave at this stage. But he is a very, very bright up and coming player. And I think that if Celtic are to sign him, you've got a good player on your hands. But I think that at Charlton with a manager like Boya, I think it will be enough to keep him on board for at least another season. And maybe he'll sign a new deal uh, after that. But there is a part of me that I think he will leave, but if Celtic do end up signing Doughty, God forbid anyway, as a Charlton fan, um, you've got a very good player on your hands. So as I say, I think there's definite interest there. 
Um, I think we're going back. The rumour is that we're going back with a third bid this week. Tyler's saying there that he thinks Charlton are looking for more two, three, four million range. I don't think for a player in the last year of his contract, that's going to be possible. I don't think Celtic would ever pay that sort of money for a player entering the last year of his contract. So it's going to be interesting to see how it develops. My only question about him would be at 20 years old, can he come into the Celtic team in a big pressure season and make a real impact? Um, that's not to doubt him in any way. I know young players have came into the team. If you look at Frimpong on the other flank, he came into the team last season at 18, 19 years of age um, and took it by storm, really. He's now the first choice in that area of the park. So I'd like to see if Doughty did come in. I want him to do what Frimpong has done. Um, but we can't even under any illusions about how difficult it is for a young player to come to Celtic and make an impact for the word goal, particularly in a season like this. If I was to give a percentage chance of this deal happening, I'm going to go 80%. I think there's definite interest there. And if we are going back, as is believed, with a third bid, um, then we definitely want to bring him to the club. And I think there's maybe a good chance that deal will happen. The next target we've been linked with this week is Ben Davies. Um, no, no, that Ben Davies. I think that must be a clickbait journalist's dream to say that Celtic are linked with Ben Davies because I, my mind jumped to Ben Davies for Spurs as well. But needless to say, there's no chance of that. Um, ben Davies from Preston, 25 years old, different profile uh, to Doughty, and that he's approaching the peak of his career um, in his mid 20s. I think he's a centre back, really, left sided centre back, and we don't have any of them at the club, so that would maybe be good. He has played left back before as well. But I had a look at his appearances for Preston in the last few seasons. Um, and to be honest, he's played less than a handful of games at left back. So I don't know if we can really consider him to, to come in and play left back or left wing back in a 3 5 2 anyway. I know it would be good to have a left sided centre half, particularly if we're going to play the three. Um, even though we've brought Duffy in now, I just think there might be space for another out and out centre half in there. But I think left back is a priority. And I'm just not sure Ben Davies is an out and out left back. To me, looking at him, watching a few clips of him, he's a big boy. He's built like a centre half. So I don't know if he's the ideal profile of player um, that we'll be looking for. If you think about Doughty, he's rapid, he's really quick, he likes going forward. Um, I think Davies looks like a, a real out and out defender and a centre half at the end of the day. Having brought in Duffy, um, I don't think we're going to stretch to bring in Davies. The Sunday Mirror in England says that Bournemouth had a £5 million bid rejected for him at the weekend there. So I don't think, I know Celtic have spent £5 million a couple of times already this season. But now that they've brought Duffy in, I just don't see us um, going out and spending another £5 million for a centre-half. Um, I think any centre-half that comes in now, provided that we keep Christopher Ayer, is going to be a backup option for us. Um, if I was to give a percentage chance of this, I think it's really low. I'm going to say 25%. I just don't see that with that price tag they're talking about, that Bournemouth have bid for him. I just don't see Celtic stretching to that for another centre-half. Um, and as I say, ideally, we're talking about left-backs and... Ben Davies has played most of his football at centre-half in the past couple of seasons, so I don't see that one happening. The final player we've been linked with in the past probably three or four weeks now is Mitchell Backer from PSG. The interest in him seems to have cooled in the last week or so. He's 20 years old, came through at Ajax, didn't quite make any first-team appearances there before PSG snapped him up. He has made a few first-team appearances for PSG already, so I think you can tell there's quality there. From watching a few clips of him, again, he's a big boy, he looks athletic, um, it looks quick, he reads the game well and I think if if you're in and about the, the PSG first team then you must have a lot of quality there's obviously a relationship there between the clubs as well with the previous loan deal for Edward and then we brought him here permanently and um, played him in the friendly at the start of the season as well so I think there is a relationship there between the clubs we apparently have had a loan bid rejected though and the murmurs coming out of France this week are that Backer wants to stay at PSG and try and fight for his place so I think if that's his intention, I don't think there's any chance of this happening um, unless it gets resurrected in the next week or two as we go towards the end of the window. And maybe he thinks he's not going to get any game time at PSG um, and we've not brought someone in, then I think um, the deal might come back to life. But I think at the moment um, it's really not going to happen. Put a percentage chance on it, I'm going to go 20%. Um, if you'd asked me last week, I'd probably have said 50, 60, 70 um, because we were getting heavily linked with him. But now the loan bid has supposedly been rejected. Um, and he is saying that he wants to stay at PSG and try and fight for first team football, then I don't think it's going to happen that deal. As I said at the top of the show, this has been a brilliant window for Celtic so far. The only other thing that we have to see out is obviously keeping a hold of all of the key players, your Edwards, your McGregors, um, those sorts of guys, they are absolutely key going forward. McGregor's been linked, it just seems that Callum McGregor is linked with Leicester like at least once a month. Um, there's murmurings about Arsenal being interested in Edward as well. There was that ridiculous talk of a £15 million bid. 
Um, I don't know what leg that was they were bidding for. <laughs> so we don't want to lose any of these players. Um, Christopher Ayer has been linked with moves away as well. So we've done really well to keep hold of the big players so far. I know there's still the best part of three or four weeks left of the window until it closes, I think, the 5th of October. So we can't be under any illusions. We know that there is going to be interest in the big players. And we can't define this window as absolutely brilliant until we've finished it. We've brought in at least another left back and we've kept a hold of all the key players. Neil Lennon was asked about some of these guys today when he commented on individual players, um, as he never does before any deal has been done. So it's going to be interesting to see how it develops. I think this is the missing piece of the jigsaw. I think if we can bring in a good quality left wing back and keep a hold of all of the key players, I think it will be a brilliant window for Celtic. I think it's probably, as I said last week in some of the content, the best transfer window I can remember in my time as a Celtic supporter. Um, there's usually a big blow in the transfer window. We've always got complaints about the, the calibre of players that we've brought in, but I think the business we've done so far has been exceptional. Um, I think Barkas looks good. I think Ayeti looks really good. We've spent good money on those two permanent signings. Shane Duffy looks like he's going to be a huge uh, character, a huge leader for the team. Brilliant qualities as well, both defensively and defensively, as we've seen at the weekend. I think David Turnbull is probably the best young Scottish prospect to break out onto the scene in the past two or three seasons. We've got him in a permanent deal as well. So I think that's really good business by the club. And I think if we can just bring in that left back, keep a hold of the key players, it'll be a fantastic window. That's it. Like the video. Comment with your own thoughts below. If you haven't subscribed already, please click the red subscribe button below. And we'll see you tomorrow after the St. Martin game for live full-time reaction. Cheers. Oh! <laughs>